Yeah, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. How was your Labor Day, man? Oh, it was fantastic. I think you can see the sunglass little uh, mark on my face from the sunshine. <laughs> that's that's how it should be, man. Got to love it getting right. out. We had some beautiful weather, of course, uh, here. And not of course, but we had some beautiful weather in Florida as well. Still a little hot. We're waiting for a little bit of cool weather. Uh, but a great weekend, man. And back to uh, back to trading as we kick off fall trading here. I was taking a look at some of the currencies. We have some moves going on. We had a move in the dollar yesterday, uh, some move in gold, of course. Where do you want to start off? What's on your radar this week, Teddy, as we kick off kind of September trading as we're all back mm -hmm. from summer action? Well, dollar bulls are gaining strength because of the interest rate market, and you can tell even gold's leaking, you know. So, I mean, yeah. dollars are in demand right now. I mean, even by Bitcoin, obviously, someone's selling, and they're converting it to you know what, you know. So, um, yeah, dollars are in demand right now. You have this, the, the Swiss, U.S. dollar Swiss and the U.S. dollar yen making a higher move highs and pressing. Uh, they're looking for a breakout to the upside right now. So that's a very good sign of strength for the U.S. dollar. Why don't we can we take a look at the yen because I pulled the yen up and we mm -hmm. had not, not reversals of some of the trends we've been looking at but uh, no real reversal there at all on the yen and as in mm -hmm. continuing to kind of bump up against the maybe you know close to that upper boundary line of 111 we have 111.65 but we're sitting in 11031 right now um, what are you looking at for the yen coming up well it's been a grind you know because it's been going sideways for the past two weeks I mean a range yeah. traders have been doing well it's, but, but it has been making buffering higher move highs and higher moves move lows and that's what it's doing right now and I can't it, right now if you look at what happened in the interest rate market since unemployment you have the 30 year and the 10 year that are slamming lows today they're kind of quiet but they're they're looking for higher rates higher rates mean stronger dollar so stronger dollar unless the BOJ is going to start raising rates anytime soon um, which they're not you know um, I'm still saying that we're going to see the yen up at 112 half to 113 half and I have 116 by the end of the year you know with the Oof. way things are trending you know especially if gold, if gold gets a... hit no go ahead man go ahead please. yeah i'm sorry yeah, yeah just, just... To, just to finish yeah especially if you see gold keep continue to sell off i could see it. if you see gold sell off oil continue to rally oil has been buffering higher move highs and higher move lows for the past week and a half it hasn't been breaking out but it's been trending back towards where it's higher range you know and i see oil breaking out to the upside gold going down you know and if the rate, rates go higher on the market say, side there's no way that the u.s dollar is not going to remain strong especially against the yen you know that's the one yeah. currency i think that it i mean I, I don't care if the dollar becomes a bear versus every other currency out there i see the dollar being a bull versus the yen for the next few months you know especially as if you look at what's going on now <clears throat> i talked to somebody in singapore last on uh, monday they're in full lockdown. You know, as Asia starts to tighten up their belts with the corona stuff, especially, you know, we already know what's going on in Australia and New Zealand. You know, this impacts Japan huge. This really, really is a big deal for them. You know, I mean, you're looking at the, the whole thing with the chips, with uh, Toyota and stuff like that. Remember, yeah. the, the Japanese have to deal with the Chinese and their relationship is very tenuous at best right now. You know, and the Chinese have an upper hand over Japan as far as production and stuff like that. That doesn't bode sure. well for, for them, you know, so I think that's where you have a lot of fundamental weakness in the yen, you know, I mean, the, the, like I said, the only thing I could see that would really strengthen the yen would be as if the Bank of Japan says we're going to start raising interest rates, but I, I, I don't see that happening, you know, I just don't see that happening at all. And what, it, what um, back to yields for a second, because this one's so okay. interesting, you know, how it would play into just the markets, maybe some of those mm -hmm. tech stocks are through the moon. Um, what are you looking at for, for yields as we come into the end of the year here? I mean, we have a meeting coming up later this month for the Fed. We get some interesting mm -hmm. jobs numbers that will be on the, the docket in the next couple of months or so. Sure. Um, and, you know, we've talked about the inflationary data, et cetera. What, do you, what are you kind of looking at right now? We're sitting at about 1.35% right now. And I agree mm -hmm. that the pressure has definitely been on a price-wise, you know, to the downside here as we're seeing kind of a rise in yields. What are you looking for as, as we march on right now with, with some of those, uh, the interest rate market, the yields coming up? Okay, well, as far as the interest rate markets, I think it's going to go one, obviously it can go one of two ways. Um, but uh, coronavirus is the big deal. If we okay. can sustain our at least position where we're at now for the rest of the year, then I think that it's very, very likely that you're going to see interest rates from the market basis continue to trend higher, meaning bond prices going lower. Um, should we have, now here's a very interesting, and this is why we're, the next few weeks are very critical. 
last time at this year, um, I'm, I have a, my girlfriend and I are going out to uh, Ithaca, New York in a month and a half to visit her niece. Um, okay. we, may not be, we may not be going there anymore, and here's the reason why. She goes to Colgate, okay? Last year nice. at this time, they had no vaccinations, but they had strict policies as far as getting coming to campus and starting school. This year, they had stricter requirements, and they have an over 95% vaccination rate for students and faculty. However, as of this week, they have more than five times the COVID cases. They're already talking about going back to remote learning at Colgate within the next week yeah. or two. If that happens, and this starts to, I mean, you know how this will trend, that would be the thing where possibly the bonds could get a big buying spray in the short okay. run, you know, only in the short run. But if you look at what's going on with the, the real estate market and things like that, uh, the bond market is itching and telling you that the Fed can stay it. They can keep on trying to prop it up and they may not want to raise rates, but the market is dictating they will. And that's going to influence the currency market. You know, when as the rates go higher market basis wise, then no matter what, the currency value gets affected by that as well. Yeah. Well, I think you do a great job. I mean, half the battle right now with so many variables in play in terms of whether you're looking at interest rates, whether you're looking at, you know, is it the Delta variant? Is it the jobs number? Um, half the battle is deciding which variable in play you think is going to be mm -hmm. the important one, right? That kind of shapes right. where the market goes, man. Right. Um, right. And I well, agree. One, talk to, let me let me just um, yep. interrupt real quick. The one thing we remember we've been talking about a few, for a few weeks now is that the big bond numbers, the big economic numbers, those are becoming more and more important every day now because we've learned no matter what, whether we learn to live with coronavirus or not, the markets have. That's a fact, no matter yes. what. Like the markets yeah. no longer are like, hey, what do we deal with pandemic? Now they're like, traders are like, hey, volatility, we love it. Yeah, <laughs> we're we know locked the world's in our not ending, thank you, goodness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. The sky's not falling, you know. Yeah. So, and, and that's the reality that we're dealing yeah. with now. So it's a new age. It's fun. You know, I have friends who are like, how are you doing with this stuff? I'm like, well, I mean, <laughs> really? No, <Nope>, volatility <laughs> is a trader's best friend, and they say yeah. it. I know, and there's yeah. a lot of volatility. So. I agree, man. You know, what I try and wrap my brain around is that with every day that goes forward, with every number that we kind of push back the expected mm -hmm. recovery, there's more expectations that fall on the future numbers because if right. we're pushing it back, the rationale is right now it's that there's a four to six week delay because Delta variant. You know, well, what right. happens in a month or two that right. maybe we don't hit the jobs number? Right. Well, well here's Teddy, another we thing. Look at the car dealerships around you. I don't know how they are by you, but they're empty. Yeah. No, big That's time. That's a problem. Man. Big Take time. care. See you next week, guys. Thank you, Teddy, for the weekly update, hey, man. You're we'll welcome. talk to you next Wednesday. Okay. Sounds great. Folks, reach Teddy every trading day, forex-trading-unlock.com. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned.